Previously on Sailing Zatara. After finally receiving our stuff from Australia, we unpacked everything and moved in. And finally left the marina and took the boat out on our own. We motored around the coast and found a nice bay to drop anchor in. And started to really appreciate just why we are buying a catamaran. Tell you a story about me and you Out on the water Surrounded by the blue They scream that only I'll be saved They told us off the line But I just let it float away Yeah, I let it float away I let it float away I let it float away Float away, float away Yeah, I Here we are in the big anchorage of Samos for the Gory, okay? All right, we're going to Bodrum, Turkey. Okay, Can you find that on the map? I thought we were going to Maramos or whatever. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's not uh, We're going to check in in Bodrum. So how many miles is that? That's... Uh, 58.5 nautical miles. Oh, that's that first leg. That's 58.5 miles. Yeah, that's what I just said. All right, so if we're going eight knots, how long is it going to take us to get there? Eight nautical miles per hour. Uh, if it was 56, it'd take us seven hours. This is where we're actually going. This and what's is a, there? Well, it's a big town. It's uh, got lots of chandleries, uh, lots of places oh, yeah. to work on the boat. Uh -huh. So we'll do our solar panel install. We'll get all the parts we need. We'll get lines and, and different things that we need to upgrade the boat. Nice. And then once we've got that going, then we'll probably pull out of there and we'll just start. Daryl and Wiz has been cruising all up and down. All of the, uh, they've been cruising all up and down this area here. Oh, nice. Excellent. So here we go. We're going to get out of Greece. And Jack, you're going to help navigate and get us going that way. So we just left Greece and we're heading to Turkey and the kids are raising the sail. After traveling for about eight hours, we found a nice quiet anchorage and settled in for the evening. Tomorrow we would get up early and head to Bodrum to check into Turkey. And Turkey would become the 18th country we have visited by sailboat. <laughs> it was a beautiful morning as we went to uh, Bodrum where we were going to check in. We had to motor, there's no winds, and it was a nice beautiful morning. I got up early and just motored down. There's, it was just real beautiful and calm as we came into Bodrum. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. One of the things that did happen on our way down that the transmission on the port engine started giving us fits, whether it's the flywheel or the uh, the uh, clutch uh, or the. Uh, coupler I didn't know what it was but it, it kicked out of gear one time we didn't have any the engine was running fine and we had plenty of uh, rpms but we didn't have any uh, propulsion so that kind of worried me a little bit but it went back to working so coming into Bodrum I knew we was going to have to med more at the uh, key and I was nervous about doing that that was the first time we had uh, med moored with this boat and uh, a little nervous because it's a new boat and a lot of busyness there, but we had a wide spot to get in there and, and med more, and it worked out real good. Jack and Anna were all hands, and uh, we just dropped the hook and motored backwards and got in there. What are you doing? 
Kate? Stupid school. Stupid school. I hate it. Math. Fractions. Common denominators. Oh, I know. It's a horrible life. Oh, grumpy. Oh, grumpy, grumpy. Jack, do you know that Kate is a lot like you when you were in fourth grade and trying to learn fractions and kind of. Yeah, I don't learn fractions. So. <laughs> what are you studying? Biology. Biology? <laughs> this is. Whenever you go upside down on your head, it just makes. Does it make the information just stick in your brain better? Gravity forces it to your brain? This is my ADD child. She would literally be diagnosed with ADD or hyperactivity syndrome. Yeah. Go like there. Yeah, just like your big brother up there. Well, we're sailing around the bottom half of Turkey here, going to Marimus, Marimus, however you pronounce it. We finally got to sail a little bit. The winds in the Met are very finicky because all the islands blow, the wind blows around and through, and so there's lots of wind effect, land effect. And so you, you can't really sail a whole lot. It's a lot of motoring, motor sailing, and then if you want to work your sails all the time, then you're constantly changing sails if you don't want to motor because the wind changes every couple of hours. It's just, you go around a different landmass and the wind's out of a different direction. So, so it's kind of different out here in the med sailing. But we got 13 knots for parent wind, or 11 knots, and we're making 6.6 .6 over ground. How do you like the boat? I love the boat. If this was our old monohull, and it was a great boat, that old monohull, but we would be healed over, nobody would be doing school, it would be very <laughs> uncomfortable, we'd be over about 20, 25 degrees. I think we're going to tip over. I think you better let the jib out. And nobody would be doing anything saying, oh, are we there yet? Yeah. You know what, they're already saying that, are we there yet? <laughs> As we was coming around the Cape to head up to north, uh, northeast to Marmaris, the winds were picking up gradually. We was in 20 to 25 knot winds and it was, the boat was sailing great. We had winds off 60 degrees or so on the beam, the port beam, and uh, the boat was making really good time. And then as we got closer, the winds started picking up 25, 30, 35 knots and gusting. And so I wanted to go ahead and reef. We'd never reefed a conventional sail before, so we was going to try to we reef. So Anna turns into the wind, and we start to reef, and then the wind just really picks up. And uh, one of my clutches wasn't working on the reef, and it wasn't holding the line down. Also, the, the, the strap that holds the reef on the, the clue uh, wasn't uh, in the right spot. I need to reposition those, and so it, we had to fight with that for a little bit. biggest negative is is when we came out of this reefing uh, trying to reef the sail into the wind 
I had already lost that transmission issue again. The flywheel issue or the, the, the uh, coupler issue had become a problem on that port engine. We had no thrust on that port engine. I was in irons, or I couldn't even get the boat to come off and turn off. I could have sailed, but I was worried that the wind was going to get more, was going to pick up more, and I didn't want to really damage any sails. I didn't want to blow down any sails, so I just was going to just pull the sails in and just motor uh, with the starboard engine the rest of the way to uh, Marmaris. If you've never sailed before, I think you'll find, like I did way back in the beginning, that the enormity of a sail, a giant wing in the air, is very intimidating. It's so loud and powerful. It seems to me that this Lazy Jack system is more difficult and messier than the automatic in-mast furler system that we used to have. But the kids insist it's easy. They don't mind it at all. They're all able to keep their cool and stay calm and focused during these maneuvers. So we're gonna be just fine. came around another cape there right before Marmaris and there's a little canyon pass there and the winds were you know 40 45 knots gusting through there right on the nose and just hammering us so we were making about four knots with one motor at 1800 rpm and and uh, but we made it and that was a good thing and it was a good lesson my kids were calm we were all calm I was a little edgy but it was a it was a good time Marmaris is a Mediterranean resort town along the Turkish Riviera. It sits in a valley between pine forested mountains and crystal clear waters and is a very popular sailing destination known for its lively nightlife and seafront promenade. Join us next time for more family-friendly redneck sailing adventures and maybe a solar panel installation. <laughs>